We all have that person in our lives, that neighbor we pass by daily, that coworker we see five days a week, those friends we catch up with, people we wish would know and experience the love of Jesus. It takes great faith, with time, effort, vulnerability, and sacrifice to reach out to them. What greater opportunity than exercising your faith at our very own SIBK Alpha? Now is the time to invite your friends for our upcoming Alpha and introduce the love of Christ to them. Creator God, the beginning. You made me for a good and perfect place and will. My life's like a vessel you have filled. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Prince of Peace, the Savior of my life, Redeemer, Master. Lord, you took my place upon the cross. Save a broken, wretched one like me If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. As the season of fast and prayer comes to a close, let's continue to reflect on what the Lord has imparted to us during the season and really long for our heart to know Him. Join us for the closing of the 40 days fast and prayer journey as we give thanks and have communion together as the body of Christ.
Now is the time, calling all Malaysians from across the land to rise up and pray for the country during this crucial time of transition and transformation. This Malaysia Day, come with a prayerful heart and join us for our prayer revival service as we saturate our country with the presence of God. Let's uphold the spirit of caring for one another and call on the King of Kings to see a miraculous transformation in our beloved Malaysia and its people. We all have that person in our lives, that neighbor we pass by daily, that coworker we see five days a week, those friends we catch up with, people we wish would know and experience the love of Jesus. It takes great faith, with time, effort, vulnerability, and sacrifice to reach out to them. What greater opportunity than exercising your faith at our very own SIBKL Alpha. Now is the time to invite your friends for our upcoming Alpha and introduce the love of Christ to them. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your touch and go card.
One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. As the season of fast and prayer comes to a close, let's continue to reflect on what the Lord has imparted to us during the season and really long for our heart to know Him. Join us for the closing of the 40 days fast and prayer journey as we give thanks and have communion together as the body of Christ. Now is the time, calling all Malaysians from across the land to rise up and pray for the country during this crucial time of transition and transformation. This Malaysia Day, come with a prayerful heart and join us for our prayer revival service as we saturate our country with the presence of God. Let's uphold the spirit of caring for one another and call on the King of Kings to see a miraculous transformation in our beloved Malaysia and its people. We all have that person in our lives, that neighbor we pass by daily, that coworker we see five days a week, those friends we catch up with, people we wish would know and experience the love of Jesus. It takes great faith, with time, effort, vulnerability, and sacrifice to reach out to them. What greater opportunity than exercising your faith at our very own SIBKL Alpha. Now is the time to invite your friends for our upcoming Alpha and introduce the love of Christ to them. Your love has invaded my heart, consumed me and made me new. How could I live but to live for you? Ooh, ooh. I'm leaving my past behind. Freedom is. Christ is mine, only live for me, I only live for you.
Now is the time, calling all Malaysians from across the land to rise up and pray for the country during this crucial time of transition and transformation. This Malaysia Day, come with a prayerful heart and join us for our prayer revival service as we saturate our country with the presence of God. Let's uphold the spirit of caring for one another and call on the King of Kings to see a miraculous transformation in our beloved Malaysia and its people. Children Ministry needs you, especially if you love our little toddlers and preschoolers aged 2 to 6. Come join us. Scan this code on the screen to sign up now. Being a man in today's world is easier than ever before. Stress, financial worry, flexibility, everything, struggle, depression, uncertainty, lack of living interest. All right, maybe it's not that easy. Calling all men. We have a special camp ready for you. A camp aimed to rejuvenate your soul. It's time to reboot, recharge, <laughs> renew. We're gonna have fun game, fellowship, food, and more. Bro, what? I'm hungry again. And most importantly, work. It'll be held at Harvest Haven. Not heaven, but close. A beautiful, serene place without the interruption of the outside world. The perfect place to reboot, recharge, renew. On top of it all, you men will be having the trip of your lives. I can contain all my excitement within this short promo. It's time for you to unpack the surprises for yourself. Sign up now. Shut up. <laughs> We all have that person in our lives. That neighbor we pass by daily. That coworker we see five days a week. Those friends we catch up with. People we wish would know and experience the love of Jesus. It takes great faith. With time, effort, vulnerability, and sacrifice to reach out to them. What greater opportunity than exercising your faith at our very own SIBKL Alpha. Now is the time to invite your friends for our upcoming Alpha and introduce the love of Christ to them. DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Good evening, church! Hi, my name is Stephanie and I'm so privileged and I'm feeling so much joy to be in the house of the Lord and it's just my honour to welcome you here this evening. Just say hi to someone next to you, just wave. And even for those who are joining us online, hi. Just welcome to, your, to the SIBKL service this evening. And you know, I'm so excited because I'm just wondering if there's any of you who are new here, who are visiting us for the first or second time. If you are, can you just wave at me? Could you just show your hands and let us know if you're new here? Wow, well, hi, welcome. So good to have you here with us. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Maybe at the sixth floor? 
Wow, another one. Yes, hi, welcome. So good to have you here with us. And you know, if, if you're new here, we would like to invite you uh, to the Connect Counter that's just right outside the main sanctuary. We have a special gift for you. So make sure after service, head right outside. And uh, we would also love to, in to connect with you. So go right after the Connect Counter. You can go one floor down to our hospitality lounge where we would love to get to know you better. Yeah, and those who are online and it's your first time tuning in on SIBKL, we wish you a warm welcome and we would also like to get to know you. So please, could you just type in the chat and say, hi, I'm new, I'm my first time watching and we would love to connect with you. Yeah, it's, a, it's really special that we can be here today and before we go into a time of worship, there are just two quick announcements that uh, will be shown on the screen. Firstly, today is day 35 of the 40 days of fast and prayer. Day 35, just five more days to go. Is anyone going to be having withdrawal symptoms after these 40 days? <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, now my but on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, 13th of September is going to be our close. We're going to have a closing service. It's going to be at Sang 2 uh, on the fourth floor, uh, 8.30 to 10 p.m. If you can't join us physically, you can actually also tune in online on YouTube. Next announcement. Yes, next weekend will be such an exciting weekend. As you know, Malaysia Day is coming up. And on Saturday and Sunday, we have a special service. And it's going to be combined with our SIBKL BM Brothers. And this will be a prayer revival service. So can I really encourage you guys to come and be here? Come and pack this place out. It's going to be awesome. You're going to pray for God to move on this nation. We're going to believe that God is going to pour out His Spirit once again. As we've seen in the past revivals, He can do it again. Amen. Amen. Yeah, let's just stand. Let's just stand. Let's just invite the presence of the Lord here even as we prepare our hearts for a time of worship. Oh, hallelujah. You know, if you can, just join me in just, just praying out loud, just saying, Lord, I want to welcome you into my heart. I want to host your presence here in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, there is no other place we would rather be. There is no other place we would rather be than in the house of the Lord. This is the place where you desire to dwell with your people. And so even right now, prepare our hearts, Holy Spirit, to receive all that you have for us as we raise up our worship, our adoration, our offering to you, God. May it be a pleasing offering, may it be a pleasing sacrifice in your sight, oh God. Oh Lord, so just come and inhabit the praises of your people even this evening, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord, and we say we love you. We love you. We're expecting for you to move in this place. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, 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 amen. Truly, Lord, we love you and we love to praise you. Amen, church. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Are you ready to praise the Lord? Come on, just lift up your hands. Just shout hallelujah to Him because there's power in praises when we declare His name. There's breakthrough, there's freedom. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your name. Let praise arise. Come on, church. 
This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise. Come on, church. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you.
I even feel this evening the Lord is saying to you He's saying to His people, His beloved people that He has heard your cries that He has heard your cries the cries that you have cried when no one else is looking when it's dark and it's night and you're crying out to the Lord and He has heard your cry Can I just encourage you whatever that's on your heart right now that one thing that's on your mind that is in your heart that has been weighing you down can I just encourage you to just bring it before the Lord right now? Just bring it before Him. God is here. He is present. He desires to lift this heavy burden off you. Yes, Lord, we say we need you more. We need you more than even the air that we breathe. We need you, Jesus, in this situation that we are bringing before you right now, God. Whether it is a financial breakthrough or a health situation or something with our children, whatever it is, the Lord is here. He hears your cry. He hears your prayers. And even today, I believe in that the Lord is desiring to set you free. To bring that breakthrough that you've been desiring. That the Lord is desiring to even break the chains of slavery. To break the chains of bondage over your life or your family's life. So in the name of Jesus, right now I declare Lord that your people have been set free. Your people have been set free. Your people have been set free in the name of Jesus. Thank you. God, you see every heart, every life represented, every family, each of them are personal to you. You know them, you know them. You know every hair on your head, you know every situation, even before they can utter it from their mouth, you know them. Lord, I pray that they would feel such a presence of God, your love being poured out into their hearts even right now through the Holy Spirit. Can I encourage you just to receive from Him, receive from the Lord even today for the situation that you have. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And even for anyone who's having any physical ailments that you're not well in your body, can I just encourage you to just put your hand up just to show, just to let me know and put the other hand on that part of your body that needs healing. 
the Lord cares for you the Lord desires to bring healing so even right now for those of us who don't have any he- needs can we just stretch our hands out to our brothers and sisters around you just declaring the peace of God the healing of God Lord would you release your healing anointing even in this sanctuary right now release your love to those who need it release healing right now Lord even for those with broken hearts they're going through anything mental depression God God, I'm declaring your peace would enter their hearts right now, God. Dispelling every darkness, dispelling every fear because it is your perfect love that casts out every fear. Break the yoke right now, Lord. Break it, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, you're so good. You're so good. You're so good, you're so good God. We praise you for every healing that has taken place, God. Thank you, Jesus. And we're also going to pray for three names on the screen right now. Can I just encourage you to stretch your hands as we pray for A.S. Tan, for Selena, and for I.W. Fu. God, all of them are precious in your sight. They are your daughters, God. As they go through the different issues, dementia, lung cancer, schizophrenia, God. Father, I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus, would you touch them wherever they are now, in their homes, wherever they are, Lord, will you touch them? Touch them in such a tangible way that they know that it is you that have healed them of dementia, of lung cancer, God. In the name of Jesus, I'm asking, Lord, that you would remove, shrink, cause the cancer to go in the name of Jesus. Cancer, I say to you, you have no place in Selena's body right now. I ask that you re- be gone in the name of Jesus. You do not belong there. And for IW Fool, we ask God that your supernatural peace would just come upon her. Your love would fill her heart. She would encounter you, encounter your presence. And that she would be healed and set free. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing and what you continue to do, Lord. So continue to be with us even as we hear your word this evening, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We have passed it, yeah. Can we just continue with this song, just the chorus, if you don't mind. Let's all just worship. You can be seated, but let's just prepare our hearts. Let's sing. I need you, Lord. More than yesterday, I need you, Lord. More than words can say, I need you more than ever before. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Let's just sing it one more time. I need you more. Mean it from the bottom of your hearts today. More than yesterday, I need you more. More than words can say, I need you more than ever before. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Father Lord, that's our prayer today to say, We need you, Father. We need you. Whatever our circumstances, Wherever we are, we need you. Even in good times, we need you, Father. In bad times, we still need you the same. The Lord, we are not going to treat you as though that only when we want you, when we need something, we call upon you. But Father Lord, we want to come before you in whatever situation we are in, that we still say, we need you. We need you. Help us, Lord, to not fall short of the promises that you have for us individually. Help us to cling on you, to know that you are our only hope. 
That's why we need you. Thank you, Jesus, for today. Lord, Holy Spirit, would you just come take your rightful place today? Lord Jesus, take your rightful place. Holy Spirit, minister to every single one of us here today, physically or online, that Lord, speak to us personally that your word, the Logos, will become Rema to us individually today, Lord Father. We need you in this house. We need you in our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say, Amen. 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 Let's just give Jesus a big, a wonderful clap offering. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Hello. Welcome back to church. It's a wonderful, wonderful day, even though, you know what, even though just now with all that distraction or whatever, you know what's the one thing that I noticed? It was not that distraction, that sound. It was actually the voices. Did you all notice Either consciously or unconsciously, you all sang louder. Do you all notice that? Why? Because we're not going to let whatever is happening distract us. Those things, are, it happens here and there. Yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, we have to give glory to God, right? Let's give God a big clap offering. And thank you so much, tech team. I know they were stressing out the whole time, but really thank you so much for even helping to make everything uh, well again. Today, we are in this new series. Yay! So today, all of you are getting the first Feel the first cut of the cake. Do you know what series you are in today? Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. Maybe I can hear a bit. Like, what series are we in today? As we start, Judges, right? The book of Judges. Uh, um, last weekend, Pastor Chu and Pastor Jeffrey gave a, a, a big overview of Judges, and it's very interesting. As we are going into the book of Judges, it's like, what? What can we learn from this? There's so many things. If you really read all our. Uh, some of them, uh, it becomes, I think Pastor Chiu mentioned that this is not a book for children. It's a, a, like an adult book. It can get quite gory one, you know. There's one part you see, uh, they, they step, uh, then the, the fats cover the hand. Uh, it, oh, very gory one. But why, uh, why we decide to do this, I believe at the end of the day, God has a purpose. You know, in every part of the Word of God, we can catch something new. And so today, we're in the book of Judges, Judges chapter 1. Before I start, I want to ask you all a question. Okay, how many of you, you made a New Year resolution for this year? Year 2022, you start every time, you know, at the end, like December, end of December last year, we always say, okay, we're going to make a resolution for ourselves for 2022. This is what we're going, we're going to do. Whatever it is, how many of you have done that? You don't have one, ah? Don't be shy. It's okay. Can put our hands on. No, no, not, not wrong one. No, to, put, to do resolution. Hands up, hands up. So I just want to have a look. Okay, generally, most of you have some resolution that you started. Maybe some of you, I'm going to ask, based on all that resolution that you made for 2022, how many of you made that same resolution in the, the year before? Hands up. Oh, I, I see the guilty faces. How many of you have been keeping that resolution for the past five years? Ah, God, not really. Well, some people actually got, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, you know what? Next year, uh, I want to, for example, one resolution, uh, I want to lose weight. Simple. Right? right? I, I, a lot of us want to, I want to be healthier. Every, that's generally everyone will say that. So imagine, next year, now it's December. Next year, I want to lose weight at least five kilos. Lah. Not bad, ma. one year, five kilos, doable. Ma. January, start well. Family gathering, or nope, nope. I don't eat so much rice. I control. Wow, people say very good. February, still okay. Middle of the year, huh? Start to, uh, yeah, it's okay lah, never mind lah, never mind. I, I, uh, this week, uh, this month, I, I do less lah. Next month, I cover back lah. I eat less next month, right? Right? Yeah, I see some of you smiling already. You know what I mean. Then reach end of the year, come November. Alamak, instead of losing five, I gain two kg. Huh? Then, ah, yeah. Never mind, never mind. Next year will be different, right? We always say, never mind the following year, we keep this year for next year, next year will be different. Same thing happened. How many of you have gone through that kind of cycle before in your life? Every year you say you want to do something, want to do something, end up that jadi, right? God, right? I see some hands. I see, well, okay, there's a sudden laughter there, but okay, yeah. So this cycle is very natural for us when 
And I'm not here to say, ah, oh, yeah, you see, you all don't know how, not disciplined. I'm, I'm not coming from the angle, but talking about this cycle, one moment that we are very motivated, very inspired to do something, but it just doesn't hold all the way to the end of the, 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 the race, or you can put it, or the, or the time frame that you put. We fall short of the, the goal we want to achieve. Then we said, never mind, we'll try again. Then we still fall short, fall short. So it's like a, a cycle like that. If you can understand this concept, you'll understand the book of Judges very well. Because that's the cycle. And then in Judges 1, you know, Pastor Chu gave that whole cycle about, um, you know, the, 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 the people of God, they, they were blessed. You no, know, they start with very blessed. And then because of that, in good times, then they start to sin. After they start to sin, then they, oh, they cry out to God. God, oh no, because why? They have oppression. When they sin, then oppression comes, then they cry Oh Lord, help me, help me, help me. And God, who is a gracious God, would definitely come and help. So he brings either a prophet or a judge to, to save them, to redeem them. Then they say, oh, thank you, God. We repent. We repent for what we have done. Then God bless them again because they are free. God bless them. And then because of their blessing again, in good times, then they start to sin again. The cycle over and over. We understand that that cycle is there. We understand that we, in our own life, we have that cycle in the things that we do. But the thing is not just about knowing that we have that cycle and accept that cycle. The key is actually to know why. Why is that cycle happening and causing me, in that sense, as a person, to fall short of the goal that I want? That is the key. Just like the Israelites, we know that there is that cycle. We read the book of Judges, we know. But the key is to know why. Why did they have that cycle and for them, for the Israelites, the people of God, to not be able to claim that promise, to fall short of the promise that God has for them? Because God has a wonderful promise for them to say, I'm giving you this land and giving them an identity, a place filled with milk and honey. Wow, that was all the blessing for them. But why did they fall short? That is the key that we're going to learn in Judges chapter 1. And with this mindset, that's why I, 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 I entitled today, Falling Short. Falling Short. And as we go through the whole uh, book of Judges 1, I would like all of us, I'd like to invite everyone to, to have that, this mindset, mindset of reflecting, reflecting on your own self and not pinpointing, oh yeah, now I know uh, why my father is like that. Now I know why my daughter is like that. Let's not come from that perspective, but come from the perspective that, hmm, what does this mean to me personally today? So can I just encourage you to have that, even at home as well, to have this mindset. So the key question that I mentioned just now was, why did they fall short of God's promises? They meaning the Israelites. So this is the big key question that I will be mentioning a few times in this whole uh, series. So, there are three reasons that I found in Judges chapter 1. And again, I, I won't be reading the whole book of Judges 1 because there's like 36 verses. We won't be reading every single one because there's some repeated things, uh, repeated verses per se in terms of what happened. So, we're just going to briefly go through. So, why did the Israelites fall short of God's promises? And this is what I feel. The first reason is this, subtle disobedience, subtle disobedience. And this is found in verse 1 to, to 7, that, that whole chunk in itself, and this one we're just going to read scripture a little bit, okay? So in, in verse 1, it says this, after the death of Joshua, the Israelites asked God, who of us is to go up first to fight against the Canaanites? The Lord answered, Judah shall go up, I've given the land into their hands. The men of Judah then said to the Simeonites, their fellow Israelites, come up with us into the territory allotted to us to fight against the Canaanites. We, in turn, will go with you into yours. So the Simeonites went with them. When Judah attacked, the Lord gave the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hands, and they struck down 10,000 men at Bezek. It was there that they found Adonai Bezek and fought against him. Putting to rout the Canaanites and Perizzites, Adonai Bezek fled, but they chased him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and big toes. Then Adonai Bezek said, 70 kings with their thumbs and big toes have cut off, uh, have picked up scraps under my table. 
Now God has paid me back for what I did to them. They brought him to Jerusalem. Yeah, so you see in the beginning, in verse 1, you see this is after the death of Joshua. So the Israelites ask, hey, who is taking over? Who is next? You know what? We have been looking at Joshua. Joshua has been the one leading us now. His time has passed. Who is next? And this is a good thing. If you notice the beginning, they started very well because why? They inquired of God. The Israelites didn't say, okay, since Joshua has passed on, let me just randomly pick someone uh, to, fill, to fill in that shoes. That I, feel, I think this one is good. He has you know, conquered many nations. You know, he's a good warrior. You know, I think, yeah, he's, I believe he's a bit close to God. Maybe he should, be, he should be our next leader. It was not that way. The people asked of God, God, who of us is to go up first to fight the Canaanites? They started well. However, this is where I mentioned where the subtle disobedience came. You see, the Lord answered, Judah shall go up. Judah, I've given the land into their hands. The key is in verse 3. The men of Judah then said to the Simeonites, their fellow Israelites, come up with us into the territory allotted to us. So I'm going to highlight this verse, okay? Come up with us. Do you notice something? What was God's instruction? Judah, you guys go. They go, they went. However, they said, hey, Simeonites, join us. Join us as we go together. Is it very wrong? That, wow, this big disobedience. No. This is very, it feels like very subtle. It doesn't seem like a very big thing, right? Like, okay, ma, I mean, I still follow God, God's instruction to go, but let me just ask someone for like either moral support or physical support. Is that really wrong? Is that really, wow, labeled as disobedience so big? Not really in that sense. It's very subtle. It starts somewhere. You know, people, example, as a, 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 a murderer or a drug addict, for example, nobody wakes up and say, today I, I decide to be a drug addict. <laughs> out of nowhere. It has to start somewhere. And this is where the beginning of the Israelites, this is where it started. This very subtle disobedience created and opened something in their heart for the evil one to say, okay, I see a little loophole there. I'm going to use it. This is the first example. The second example is this part here. In verse 6, Adonai Bezek fled, but they chased him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and legs. Huh. Adonai Bezek simply, Adonai simply means Lord, like, like the, 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 the person in charge of the place. So he was Adonai Bezek. The place that he was in charge was Bezek. Okay, so that's the, the word Adonai Bezek. Now, if you look at this, they chased him out and cut off his thumbs and legs. What's so wrong in that sense? I mean, in those days, these kind of practices by the, 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 the pagans are, is quite normal for them. The key is this. Did God ask them to do it? No. Nowhere it's mentioned that, you know what, uh, Judah, you guys go ahead, and then when you find this uh, person, I want you to do this. This practice of cutting off the thumbs and legs is like, it's a pagan practice that Adonai Bezek did because just now, in the next verse, he said, you know, 70 kings, he has cut their thumbs and, 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 and toes and all that. Cutting of the, the thumbs, the toes and all those actually is to render them useless. Because in war times, without all this thing, you don't have thumbs, you don't have big toes and all those, how are you going to hold your weapon? Imagine without a thumb. How are you going to hold your sword? You can, how you, it's, it's, it makes you very useless as in the sense of the offensive if you cut off your thumbs. How about the big toe? <laughs> cannot kick, right? <laughs> okay, I heard someone, yeah. You cannot kick or your balance is out. You know, have you all walked before at the middle of the night and suddenly you kick the side of your bed or a, a chair, your little tiny toe? One little kick, uh, it make you like render you useless for a, a few seconds. So you cannot move like, oh, you just cannot walk. That is the whole reason why this practice was done by the pagans to render them useless. And by doing so, this is another subtle disobedience from the Israelites. Why did they do this? Maybe they felt that, mm, I, I'm afraid if this guy 
uh, this Adonai Bezek suddenly just said, managed to come out of captivity because they caught, maybe he ran a scared that, you know, he will fight back and all those. Maybe as an assurance, as a safety net, let me just do this just in case. Maybe. But the key is this. They started to disobey twice already. First, they caught the Simeonites. Second, they did all these practices that was not a directive from God. Two examples of very subtle disobedience. And all this, as we go to the next, it leads to the next example of why the Israelites would fall short of God's promises. This is the first reason that very subtly, without whether they know or do not know, it's not for us to say, but it's very obvious they were doing things that God did not direct them to do. And today, we say, how does that apply to me today in terms of all this subtle disobedience? How do I know what is subtle, what is in my face disobedience? How do I determine? As I was, as I was thinking, because I was trying to say, okay, how do I maybe sometimes subtly you know, disobey and it creates new, new things? Have you had this feeling you know, that when, when there's a situation and then you feel something in your heart. Like, you want to make a decision A, for example. But inside your heart, there's just that little nudge, little feeling that words cannot describe. You just feel like, you know, I don't think A is the right thing. That's not the godly thing. But we try to justify. No, I think A is correct. You know, it's like that. We, we justify. But then actually inside your heart, you know it's not right. Deep inside your heart, you know it's not. And there's that little nudge. And then we, we sometimes maybe, you know, we decide, you know what, it's okay. I'm, I'm going to push that. Maybe that's like being over-righteous already. Like I'm just going to go ahead with A one time. Sometimes that's the nudging of the Holy Spirit to tell you, hey, this is not really right, you know. You shouldn't be doing this. But one time we just decide, okay, never mind, one time only. Second time, this feeling comes again. And it reaches a point, I'm not sure how many of you can relate to this, it reaches a point that you suddenly, that kind of nudge disappears for a while. Everything, like, like, like the things that we do, it seems to be like, oh, God is not in the picture as much as compared to the earlier days. That feeling just disappears. And sometimes, another one, give a simple example. Not so much of disobedience, but how something small can lead to something bigger. Prayer and fasting, right? We are in a prayer and fasting season. We start and say that, okay, God, we're going to fast this. One, only eat one meal a day. First few weeks, very good. After that, then got certain makan, got party orders. Then we say, yeah, it's okay lah. One day, I can miss it. Man, ah. then after that, then comes another situation that gives you a reason to miss that the, uh, meal. Uh, eat two meals. Is that, yeah, it's okay. One, ah. After a while, do you all notice that sometimes, I ah, yeah, forget about the fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I see some chuckles. It's very true, right? Did it start overnight that we say, I'm not going to fast the next day? No. It started very small, very subtle. It starts somewhere. And that is what I'm trying to hit for this first reason, that it was a very subtle thing that led to something bigger, which is my second reason why I feel that the, the, the people of God for, fell short of his promises. So, subtle disobedience. And the second part is partial trust. Partial trust. And this is in the whole chunk of uh, chapter, uh, uh, verse 8 to 26. Okay, so in this whole part in the beginning from verse 8 to verse 18, you can go and read it yourself. We won't go into uh, every single scripture, but this whole chunk from 8 to 18 actually speaks about how the Israelites actually now are winning battles. You know, they are following after God. Say, God goes here. Okay, he was winning against the enemies. Everything seems to be going very good. It's in that sense, you can call it as victory upon victory is coming. And then it felt like, you know, God was on their side. Yes, smooth. Everything is good. But the thing changed in verse 19. As they were going through battle, they were winning and winning. And verse 19 says this, The Lord was with the man of Judah. They took possession of the hill country, but they were unable to drive the people from the plains because they had chariots fitted with iron. Iron chariots. 
So, put this, let's have this picture in, in our minds. They were going for battle. They were winning, winning, winning. Yeah, God said, I'm with you. Go, right? In the beginning, God already said, go. Go against the enemies. I will be with you. Go, 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 go. And then suddenly see iron chariots. Okay, thank you. I'm not going there. I'm going back. What's, what does that mean? You know, when God tells you to go, 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 you see something. Oh, God, I think you didn't plan for that. Lah. Uh, later, I come back. Let me re-strategize again. That was actually what was happening in that sense. Why did they say, oh, we cannot continue this battle? They didn't trust God fully. Because the God, I mean, verse 19, it says, the Lord was with the man of Judah. Do you think that God was unaware that there was iron chariots waiting for them? Probably God is want, wanted to show them that, hey, even with iron chariots, if you have trusted me, 100%, you will see a marvellous victory. That in the eyes of men, like probably this is almost close to impossible. Man, wow, fighting iron chariots, wow, that seems like an impossible battle, like a David and Goliath kind of battle, like it's a no-win situation for, for the Israelites. But maybe if the Israelites had said, you know what, God is with us, we are going to go. Things might have been very different from them. Probably I, 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 I would assume a great victory was waiting for them. But they didn't. Why? Partial trust. When they saw that the battle was easier in the beginning, 8 to 18, those kind of battles, I trust you, God, can win, can win. Looks Because in my own human eyes, it looks like can win. But now with my own human eyes, I see that it doesn't work. Ah. Sorry, God, I don't trust you anymore. Partial, 50-50. And doesn't that, in a sense apply to us today. They say, no, God, I trust you. You are a good God. I worship you, God. You are a good God in my life. You know, I know you are my father. I trust in you. But when an iron chariot comes in our life, we say, oh, we pull back. We say, wow, God, I trust you so much. I follow after you so much. Why do I get all these challenges in my life? You know, sometimes as Christians, unfortunately, we think, we, we believe somehow in, in our own, either in our heart or somehow in subconsciously, we believe that if I follow God passionately, 100% fully, I sacrifice everything, my life is going to be okay. So you know, that is sometimes our heart, but you know what? That was never promised in the Bible. God said, but one thing, he, he didn't say that if you follow me, all your problems, no more. You will live a very good life, very good even the word prosper is not the prosper that we think of. It's about peace, a life of peace, not a good, clean life. It's not that. God knows that there will be iron chariots in our lives. And what are the iron chariots that could come for those of us who have been serving God wholeheartedly? Suddenly, wow, God, you know, I serve you day in, day out. I go to church I go for all practices, prayer meetings, I go, you know, I give you the full trust, everything I do. Why suddenly my business just died like that? I sacrifice, even God, I purposely say, you know, I am not going to work on Sundays because you know what? Sundays is holy unto you, it's sacred. I want to give it to you. But Lord, because of that, my business suddenly died. Why? Uh? After doing all these things, I serve you, God. How come my family, my wife has cancer, my father has cancer? They died of this sickness. They died of this sickness. Why, God? God, I've given so much. Why is my children not following you? I've brought them up the best way I can. I bring them to church. Why they decide to just go against me and, and do the things of the world? Why? It's unfortunate. It's very sad. There is no possible explanation to say, oh, you did this, that's why you get... We can't. It happens. But God didn't just stop there. He said, but one thing, you're not going to go through this alone. I'm with you. As we go through all these moments of our iron chariots, it's going to be tough. Probably no one else can understand. It is going to be tough. But I want you to fully trust in me. Now, as I was reading this, I was just reflecting. 
you know, heartbrokenness, brokenness in families, in life will cause people to change or even change their whole situation. For example, about 10 years ago, I started Bible college. We started with 15 of us in that class, in that sense, 15 to be trained to be pastors in the near future. Today, about 10 years later, only five remain. Only five remain. What do I mean by five remain? Some have totally left Christianity. Some have just stopped and went secular. Nothing wrong with that. Some has became bitter. Like, God, you are fake. You're not true. You said you will help me. I have a friend. Real, real life story. I won't mention the name. He loves God. He really loves God. He's a worship leader. And the day his mother got cancer, he prayed so hard, God, save my mom, save my mom. Unfortunately, the mom passed. He got so bitter. He said, God, you're a liar. You said you heal. Why you didn't heal my mom? He left. Till today. Never came back. It's sad. Is there a reason why all these things happen? I, I, I can't tell. I don't know. But God has promised us that He's going to be there. Trust me. Just trust. And for me, as I was, go, I was one of the few that maintained. And during my time being in full-time ministry, I had my own iron chariots. I started with engineering prior to this. I was studying engineering, and then halfway I stopped to go full-time ministry to study full-time. So my friends continued engineering. It was materials engineering. So about five years later, that was, so uh, maybe so based, I'm 32 now, seven years ago, seven or eight years ago, can't really remember. My friends graduated, and then they all had very, very good jobs. Oil and gas industry, you know, they worked for Michelin, tires, and all those very good uh, companies. They could travel around the world like nothing. They could buy a car. You know when you are 23, 24, you know, buying a car is like a, you know, that's your first biggest investment. You know? So at that point of time, all of them were buying cars. What kind of cars? At that age, they can earn easily. They can just buy cars that were 60, 70,000. No problem. Easy. That was at that point of time when I was looking at myself. I wanted to buy a car and all those like, how do even people afford that kind of car? I couldn't understand. Yeah, but and I praise God, you know, I managed to get a, a simple car. And then as times go by, when, when rubber hits the road, day-to-day -day life, money got a bit tough, I might say, in the beginning when I was still uh, single and all that. My friends were traveling around the world. So nice. It came to a point, there's one point, this was in that sense my lowest or the biggest iron chariot, if I could say so, at that point of time. My salary was only about come in uh, in the next five days. And my wallet left only one ringgit. I had to pump car petrol. Okay, I'm not sure how many of you can relate with this because this is a real experience. I had to pull up, go into my car, pull up the carpet, see got any loose coins or not. Sofa, pull up the sofa. I'm not sure how many of you have gone through that kind before. Because my mom has, and I also went through that uh, early in my earlier days, to find just a few coins just to be able to sustain that five more days. I said, God, wow, I sacrificed so much for you. Why cannot help me in my finances, man? Not to say I simply spend. That was my first question I asked God. But thankfully today, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm okay. I'm not asking for pity or what. I'm just telling you my story. Please don't, I'm not asking for that, okay? <laughs> yeah, better put that disclaimer first. Yeah, and then the second biggest hit for me, my biggest iron chariot, if for those of you who know my cancer story, right? For those of you who remember, I, had, I was diagnosed with liver cancer and I, the tumour was taken out. Um, long, long story short, I don't have to go through the whole therapy, praise God, it was just taken out, but I'm still under checkup. That was my biggest hit. When it hit me in 2017, I think 2017, my world broke for a while. I couldn't understand. And I was supposed to preach that weekend. I still remember. 
I told Pastor Chiu, I cannot. I was not in the right frame of mind to preach. I can't. But I still trusted God. At the end of the day, Lord, I mean, you said, you called me into your ministry. I want to hold on to what you say in, in, in Philippians. In Philippians 1 verse, 8, 1 verse 6, it says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it, carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Because I know God has a good plan for me. I don't want to fall short of the great plan because I could easily just disappear from the kingdom of God, be bitter. I can easily do that, but I chose, Lord, you called me. I believe you called me and I want to believe that you have something great for me. And that helped me to not give a partial trust to God, but a full trust. And, and I believe God has great things for all of you as well if you give that full trust in your life. And I, I believe some of us have that iron chariot. Right, even right now, you're facing something that, God, I've given you everything. Why? 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 Friends, can I just encourage you to trust? Not a partial trust, a 100% full trust in God because there is going to be a great victory happening. Trust God in that because our God is a good God. Amen? And because the Israelites were not able to give their full trust, they forsook themselves, they fall short of seeing that great victory. And it's so sad. So once again, why did the Israelites fall short of God's promises, of God's great things for them? It started with a very subtle disobedience. It's just, it started there. And then from there, it grew to something a bit bigger than, hmm, I won't trust God so much now, probably. Half, half. And both of these, it started with these two, and it led to me to the third reason why they fall short. It, it, the third reason would not have happened, I believe, if you didn't start with these two. After going through subtle disobedience to God, only trusting Him partially, it was a catalyst to the last reason of why they fall short, which I believe is now they learn to compromise. God, I don't trust you as much. I think I can start to compromise. And where did I get this? In verse 27 to 33, again, this whole chunk, again, speaks about them winning about, uh, 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 against the Canaanites. And then, let me just go to the verse here. Where did they compromise? As they were going for battle again. Verse 27, But Manasseh did not drive out the people of Bethshan or Hanak or Dor or Eblem, or Megiddo and their surrounding settlements. For the Canaanites were determined to live in that land. When Israel became strong, they pressed the Canaanites into forced labor, but never drove them out completely. Nor did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites living in Gezer, but the Canaanites continued to live there among them. Do you notice this? They chose not to drive out the Canaanites, the enemies in the land. When God told them in Joshua, Earlier, go and annihilate all the enemies. Cut, take them out from this land. You don't even to see a speck of them. All their idols, destroy it. Why? If you remember when we, we were uh, uh, learning about in Deuteronomy, the, the, the whole series, God wanted to give them an identity, remember, as a people of God. That you know what? I don't want you to be distracted or to be mixed and matched with these people who are not God's people. Just, just for... for Easier understanding, okay? How many of you love to eat steak? Beef, beef steak, your hands up. Right? I recently only learned to uh, uh, appreciate beef steak because of my wife she teach me, like, I don't know how to eat beef steak. I'm very sad. I eat well done one last time. Oh, I see the judgmental faces. Yeah, so I learned to now eat medium rare. Ah, so, and this thing I know, so people who really love steak, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, tell me our steak lovers, uh, people who love to eat steak, uh, they will say, no sauce. You cook medium rare for me, the sauce is whatever is with the, the, the butter, with the garlic, with the rosemary, that is my sauce. Don't give me black pepper, brown sauce, all those. Correct or not? Right? Because why? You want to taste the beef. You want to taste oh, how fresh the beef is or how old the cow is, you know, through that one, how fresh and all that. Yeah, don't 
disrupt, don't change the taste with all these additional things. That is what God was trying to tell them. Pure. Israelites, be pure. Don't get mixed up with all this because you know what? I'm going to give you your identity. Don't get distracted with all, don't get, get, get uh, 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 poisoned by all these other practices. Just this way and this way only. But they didn't. They compromised. They allowed the people to stay with them. And you know what's the one thing that they said? You know what? They wanted to control them. You see verse 28, when, the, when Israel became strong, they pressed the Canaanites, Canaanites or the enemies into forced labour, but never, but never drove them out completely. Into forced labour. They thought they could control their enemies. They thought they could control their enemies. Today, what is the significance of the enemy? What have we lived so close to say, okay, I, I, I compromise, I allow you to live with me? Sin. Sin, the evil one, which is sin. I believe many of us can relate that sometimes we compromise and allow sin into our life and we live very close to each other. No one knows, ma. It's okay, one, ma. I'm home alone, ma. I can do whatever I want. No one is here. I'm traveling. My family is not here. I can just be quiet. I can just turn on the computer and do certain things. I can just, you know, money under the table. No one sees it's okay. Whatever it is, when I said the word sin, I believe something popped into each of our minds. Whatever it is. Again, I'm not here to judge, oh, you sinner. No, it's not about that, friends. Remember, it applies to me as well. It applies to me. Have I, I'll ask myself that question. Have I compromised and allowed sin to stay so close into my life? Because we feel we can control, right? Just like them. The Israelites thought they could control their enemies. But you know what? They were proven wrong. It happened in verse 34. The Amorites confined, Amorites are the enemies, the Danites are God's people, to the hill country and not allowing them to come down the plain. Instead of the people of God pushing them out, what happened? The enemy now drove them out. Sometimes we have compromised and allowed sin into our life so much that we get drawn away from the presence of God. We fall short. Because why? Then we, become, we, we, we get stuck in that cycle again. One moment we say, God, I'm so sorry for this habitual sin that I did. Next moment, again. And then we come back again. Cycle after cycle to the point it can even render us useless. We feel so useless already. God, I'm stuck in this. And your heart, our heart meant well that, Lord, I really want to get out of this. But we are stuck in that cycle over and over and over because why the devil's scheme is what? To steal, kill, and destroy. And how did this cycle of guilt last sin happen? Because it all started with that subtle disobedience in the beginning. The compromise don't just happen overnight, friends, from what we can see with the Israelites' journey. The evil one is here to find any loophole to enter so that we will fall short of God's promises today. And God has a good plan for every single one of us. He has a great victory waiting for us in whatever life that, that you have, in whatever personal journey that you're going through. God has a great plan. But all these things, shelter disobedience, partial trust and compromising will cause us to sometimes fall short. Fall short. And that's very sad. You know, the, the evil one is very real out there. As I was preparing my sermon, Two days ago, or three days ago, I saw this post that came up. Okay, oops. Um, oh, um, yeah, don't mind, can just put that picture. I saw this news about Peppa Pig. I'm sure a lot of you know Peppa Pig. Okay, Peppa Pig is a very famous children's show. This is two days ago. Huh? Peppa Pig. The first same-sex couple for children's show. And everyone is celebrating this. 
and I wanted to see, hmm, how many people that actually watch this uh, Peppa Pig in that sense? How many of you heard of Peppa Pig? Maybe just show of hands. Ah, you see? Most of you know about Peppa Pig. And I was just reading in, in, in CBN News, it says this, Peppa Pig needs no introduction. The cartoon show started off small 17 years ago on British TV, but transformed into a global phenomenon. Peppa Pig is watched in 180 countries and 40 languages. The cartoon was recently sold in a 4 billion deal to US toy giant Hasbro. Peppa Pig has even caught the eye of former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Clinton appeared on Graham Norton's show in November 2019 and gushed about Peppa when she met one of the series voice actors. Peppa also has her own theme park in Britain, with another one scheduled to open in the United States. The Peppa Pig theme park will open in 2022 in Winter Haven, Florida. A third theme park is planned in China. They're not getting any smaller, friends. Do you see this? This news in itself is so shocking. But this is very true. This is just one example of the lies that the evil one is trying to put into the next generation. And because of this, all these things, this gives me that reason why I am in children's ministry, actually. The next generation is where the evil one wants to attack. Actually, all generations. But they want to focus on the young because they are easy to nurture, man. This is my heart because the world is evil, friends. The world is evil. Imagine that three points, subtle disobedience, partial trust, it starts small. A child won't understand fully all this, but it starts very subtle. Give them five years later, imagine what will happen to their life. What are the principles that they will hold in their life? Give it another seven years and within that five to seven years, more of this thing is going to come up. It doesn't stop here. More and more will come out. Imagine what's going to happen to them. That is the cry of the next generation. And that's why I feel I want to play my part. To teach them the best way I can. But you see, teaching them in itself, what if I'm teaching the wrong thing? That's where it comes back. That for myself, I need to make sure I know the Word of God well. I need to make sure I'm living in the promises of God and I'm not falling short. Of course, we fall short once in a while, friends. That's normal in that sense. But we don't want to always fall short of God's promises. We come back, return, return back. And by serving the children, it makes me reflect. Remember the, the question that I shared in the beginning to reflect? I need to make sure that I'm not falling short first. And friends, this is just a, a little call to all of you if you have the heart to serve the children serve the children in your house first to me parents if you are here you play a huge role you play a huge role the children ministry only has one and a half hours a week you see them every day can I strongly urge parents know that you have been given that mandate to bring up a strong next generation that will not be disobedient, that would fully trust God and will not compromise. And for those of you, the children ministry actually needs help. <laughs> Might as well. Join us. Join the team. Serve however you can. So you saw the booth outside. If you want speak to the team there because it's, it's so important. You know, as I was just sharing all these things, for some of us, maybe we have been just going through this cycle over and over. One moment saying, yes, God, I'm so strong for you. Next moment, we compromise. Next moment, God, I'm going to trust you 100% and because of all this, it has rendered us useless. Like, remember, your, your thumbs, your, your fingers are cut off and you feel, why is everything not happening well in my life right now? Why are things just like that? God, everything I've done for you, there's, there's just so much. And you know what, friends? Sometimes, sometimes we just need to call God for help. 
God, help! Just like the Israelites, they call for help. God, I'm sorry, help me, help me. What did God do? God came and redeemed them. He will come. He will come. But the key is to not repeat the cycle. Don't repeat that cycle. And today, maybe some of us are feeling that, you know what? All these years, so many things have been stolen from me. Things that's rightfully mine that God has promised. A wonderful family, a wonderful business, a wonderful relationship. But somehow through all this, you felt that it has been stolen from you because of for whatever reason. And today you feel that, Lord, restore me. Restore the years that the locusts have eaten. That, Lord, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for whatever I've done. Yes, Lord, I have gone away from you. I've forsaken you. I maybe have been disobedient. Whatever it is, friends, you know, today, I feel God wants to restore us back. He wants to restore whatever has been broken. Because why? God does not want us to fall short of His promises. That promises was made for every single one of us. He wants us to claim back that promise. But it starts with us coming back to God. God, I'm sorry. Restore me. Restore me. As I started with the word reflect, can I just give you 30 seconds? Reflect on what has been shared. If you feel that there's certain things in your life that need restoration, right now, you feel that you have so much guilt in your heart over that cycle, whatever it is, that brokenness. I want you to think about that right now. Today, can I invite all of you to stand right now? Because I want to encourage all of us again, once again, in Philippians 1 verse 6, it says, Being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Today, I want to assure every single one of you today that God has started a good work. Allow Him to complete it. Allow Him to restore what is broken. Allow Him to restore what was stolen from you today. And if all these things mean something to you today and you really want to, God, I need you. Can I just invite you to come forward? Okay, just come forward. As the worship team is just going to worship, you say, God, restore me. Restore me once again. Can I invite you? Just come forward. And then the pastors will not be praying for you first because I would like you to spend that first moment with God. So as the worship team um, sings, can I just invite you to come forward? The gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer There is no more for heaven now to give he is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is only bound to Him. Strange and divine, I can see all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Pastors, anyone else, even as you worship again, don't let this moment pass by. If that's you, there is still a little bit of time. Is Jesus is open for you. Remember, we need the help of God. We can't do it ourselves.
to fully trust you we do not want to compromise because Lord we do not want to fall short of the promises that you have for us we do not fall short of that great plan that you have for us Lord Jesus the Lord people may have forsaken us but Lord you will never forsake us you will never forsake us because you are our only hope Lord Jesus Help us today, Lord Jesus. Even as we go back, Lord, we do not want to go back as the same person today. We want to go back refreshed, refreshed to know that, Lord, we are in your good hands. We are in your good hands and you will see us through all our trials and tribulations and that we can hold firm to you because, Lord, you will see us through today. And for those of us, Lord, that whatever has been stolen from us whatever that has been taken of us what was rightfully ours in in your great big plan Lord Father today Lord would you just restore every single one of us restore us back so that we can come back to that plan that you have for us that journey that we can have with you once again Lord as we go as we depart that Lord would you just follow us Lord Jesus your peace will be with us wherever we go. That Lord, your presence will just be in our homes, be in our cars, be in our offices. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's just give Jesus a big clap offering. Thank you so much, friends. The service officially over, but do continue to maintain in this atmosphere of worship as we uh, pastors are still here. If you need prayer, do come to the front. And just a reminder: on Tuesday, it's our closing for the forty days prayer and fasting. We would like to invite you. Remember to come to Sanctuary two at eight thirty p.m. on Tuesday. Thank you and God bless. See you all. If you would like someone to pray for you, head over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. 
You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless. Father above, Father in heaven, faithful and true. Father above, Father in heaven, we your children come to you. Father above, Father in heaven, faithful and true. Father above, Father in heaven, we your children come to you. Here is my If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. As the season of fast and prayer comes to a close, let's continue to reflect on what the Lord has imparted to us during the season and really long for our heart to know Him. Join us for the closing of the 40 days fast and prayer journey as we give thanks and have communion together as the body of Christ. Now is the time, calling all Malaysians from across the land to rise up and pray for the country during this crucial time of transition and transformation. This Malaysia Day, come with a prayerful heart and join us for our prayer revival service as we saturate our country with the presence of God. Let's uphold the spirit of caring for one another and call on the King of Kings to see a miraculous transformation in our beloved Malaysia and its people.